In this lesson, we're going to take a closer look at the timeline panel. Now, it's split up into three sections. The main section being the main timeline. On the left-hand side, you have controls for linking and unlinking, locking and changing the visibility and also muting and unmuting or soloing as it's sometimes known, the audio. If we tap on that little button there, that gets rid of that. You've then got control over the specific levels of audio on the different layers. And if you get rid of that, you then got an overall master audio here, which if you double tap, starts at plus zero. And you can obviously increase or decrease the overall master audio at this point. You can also tap the little speaking icon to mute the audio overall. And I tend to have these sections for linking and for the audio popped out when I'm working on the iPad. When you're doing this on the iPhone, you get less screen real estate so therefore, I would tend to have them tucked away. But it's up to you with how you're actually working with things. Now, on the actual playhead and timeline that you can see here, as you zoom in by pinching and zooming either side of the timeline, or you can do it along the top or bottom, it increases the amount of information that you're viewing at any one time. You can also double tap and that will shrink things down or double tap again and that will then enlarge it back up to the previous point you're at. If you want to use a keyboard shortcut, you can hold down the command key and press minus or plus to zoom in and out of the timeline. And again, you can see that playhead increasing in detail size. Generally speaking, you'll probably work at it around about this resolution, but you can pinch and zoom it or Command plus and minus it if you want to be a little bit more accurate with the actual timeline itself. Upon highlighting a video clip, you'll then see we've got different options going on here. The first one being duplicating the actual clip itself. We tap on this, it will make a copy and put it on the next video layer. If I press the backspace key on the keyboard, we vanish. We'll highlight the clip again. You've also got the ability to unlink clip, and that means that it's not attached to the rest of the timeline. So if you start to move these things around and they're unlinked, then things can get very messy very, very quickly. So when you're just starting out video editing, just leave it in general linked up. You've then got, if we tap here, user effect. So for example, I could tap best vignette, or we've got blur 10, that kind of thing. We can also have quick stabilization, and we can also dial in specific frame and fit settings. So copy and paste next. So at the moment there's nothing set up. So for example, if I want to copy the settings here, it's just the same as it would be for a normal clip, which is Command C. You'll notice the clip deselected at that point. If you then move over to the next clip and do Command V, it will paste the settings. In this case, the blurry effect that applied to the previous clip. But if you don't have a clip selected and you go to the end, and do Command V, it will actually copy and paste the whole clip. So it's a bit like duplicating. And sometimes I tend to select a clip, do Command D to duplicate it, or press the button there, backspace that, and then manually move it around to decide where I want it. And then in the layer below, as you can see, we've got a music track, which I can play through. And again, you can control the audio volume here on this particular track. You get the idea. I'll double tap just to reset it. And you can also mute the audio as well. That just shuts it off. Plays it back through. And that's the same for each of the video layers. You get six tracks of audio and six tracks of video. So 12 tracks in total. But obviously, you can play about with that in terms of you can put audio within the video tracks, but you can't put video in the audio tracks, if that makes sense. So generally speaking, you would have an overall track of audio actually in the video, which we'll look at later on, and then effect, background music, that kind of thing, sitting below it. In this case, this is a sort of fantasy sound. And as you've covered in the beginning, the button over here in the far left takes you back to your project and on the other side you've got the ability to change the view. This is probably more useful I would say in the iPhone version of LumaFusion than it is 
in the iPad version. With the iPad version, you tend to kind of stick with either the default view, which looks like this, or I like the reverse, where the preview panel is on the left-hand side. You've then got your ability to share and export movie, audio only, very recently GIF animations now, which we'll look at, project package, and XML for the likes of sending the data to Final Cut Pro and then making a snapshot, which we'll cover in another lesson.